Hey, what is going on, guys? In this video today, we're going to be doing a breakdown of my personal favorite Fortnite player, Tifu. Now, I want to make it clear at the very beginning of this video that this has absolutely nothing to do with his drama with FaZe. I've planned on making this video for a while now, so it's kind of unfortunate timing with all that drama, but I can assure you that this video will strictly be focusing on Tifu as a Fortnite player. So in my somewhat biased opinion, I truly believe that Tifu currently holds the title as greatest Fortnite player of all time. He currently sits at number two all time in terms of Fortnite competitive earnings, only a few thousand dollars behind Bizzle. But in my opinion, Tifu simply has the best combination of consistency, dominance, exposure, and performance on the game's highest stages. So what I want to do with this video is break down some of the less obvious things that makes Tifu so dominant. As I've mentioned before, that's one of the things that makes me appreciate him so much as a player. If you watch him play in high stakes competitive matches, it's very rare that he makes those super flashy mechanical plays, whether it be with building or aim, that make you question if what he just did was even humanly possible. He's one of the smartest players on the planet, and he's so good at a lot of the little and less obvious things that you'll see in this video. And because he very rarely relies on his insane mechanics, a lot of what Tifu does on a game-to-game -game basis can easily be applied to your own gameplay. So, I have about three to four different clips to break down from this weekend's World Cup qualifiers, and without further ado, let's get right into it. Alright, so as I was watching Tifu attempt to qualify for the World Cup this weekend, one of the things that jumped out to me right away is how good he is at prioritizing the right enemies and not getting tunnel vision in fights. Here's a clip from a really chaotic endgame where Tifu and Cloak initially have high ground, but Cloak ends up accidentally falling, so they're forced to give it up. Pay attention to how smartly Tifu plays this somewhat awkward situation. I beamed! I got, I got, I got, I got, oh, I just fell! I have one health. I'm coming up. I dropped the campfire. Okay, okay. I can come down to you. I'm just gonna come down to you. Just watch out for Rifters. They don't land up. Okay. Rifters, too. No armor, no armor. Flash! Flash up this guy diving. Nice, nice, nice. Got him. Got that guy. No Rifters. We're clear in the air. I'm dropping down two floors. So in a crazy competitive endgame like that, most of the time high ground is going to be the most advantageous position to be in. It's really no different than normal Fortnite. High ground gives you a great view and angle on everybody below you, and it makes it really easy to get picks. So when Tifu was forced to give up high ground because Cloak fell, his number one concern was to constantly check if anybody else had a chance at high ground, and then to prevent those players from actually getting it. In that clip, he called out twice in maybe a 15 to 20 second span, check for rifters, or focus rifters, because that's the easiest way that most players get high ground in that situation. In a fight like that where there's a ton of people and so much chaos going on in such a small area, it's so easy to just focus on players that don't present any threat to you and seem like easy kills. I mean, Tifu and Cloak still had high ground over the majority of players that were left, so they could have easily just sprayed and RPG'd everybody on low ground. And honestly, that's probably what I would have done, and what I think most people in that situation would have done as well. But if Tifu and Cloak had done that, then the first rifting team would have probably landed on their old high ground, neither of them would have heard it because there was so much loud action going on, and then the high ground team probably would have just absolutely lasered them. But what happened instead was they made sure to focus on the biggest threat to them first, and then they engaged the players that weren't a threat to them and picked up some easy kills. So as you kind of got a sample of in that first clip, another thing that Tifu does so well, especially when he's playing with Cloak, is that they have insane communication and teamwork. 
I know, communication and teamwork is probably boring when compared to cranking 390s at the speed of light or hitting a 150 plus damage flick shot, but I think all it's going to take for you to understand the importance of it is to show you guys a short little clip featuring one of the most dominant teamwork depending combos in all of Fortnite, the RPG Heavy Sniper. Okay. That dude, I'm shooting a rocket in there. Red, red. Shoot a rocket, Bottom shoot a rocket. Right. Yep, yep. Got him, got him. I'm pushing, I'm pushing. Nice. Shoot another no, no, one. There's two, there's two teams there. There's two teams there. Yeah, but we should at least push up and get the kill. Yeah, no, he's, he's dead. Can I'm shooting. QRPG, QRPG, this wall. Yeah, right inside here. metal, inside metal. No, no, right one, right, right, right wall, right wall. I did. I just got a heavy sniper though. Yo, RPG back one, RPG back one. Which one's right the back here. one? I'm red, red, red. RPG red. I'm shooting, I'm shooting it right now. I hit him, I hit him, yep. Nice. Lower, 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 lower brick, lower brick right here. I'm back, 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 back up right there. Do it. Okay, okay, okay. Ready? Give me a sec. Got him, got him, got him. Nice. him. Nice Do you want to push? Like... Yeah, I want that loot. So in case you didn't really follow or understand what happened there, the RPG heavy snipe combo works like this. One player will shoot an RPG at a wall, and then their teammate will heavy snipe that wall to destroy it right before the RPG is about to hit it. So as an enemy, you hear an RPG being shot at you, but you think you're totally safe because you have a wall in front of you. Therefore, when that wall gets destroyed in one shot at the very last second, it's a GG if you can time it perfectly. I can assure you that combination is nowhere near as simple as Tifu and Cloak made it look in that clip, especially in a lobby full of pro-level players that will kind of be expecting the combination a lot of the time. Their level of communication and coordination in that fight was just unbelievable. They seriously went about 35 seconds straight without even a moment of silence, and everything they were saying was super relevant information. I mean, they probably used the marking feature more times in that one fight than a lot of people use it in a 10 game span. So the lesson here that can be applied to everybody is that in team game modes like duos and squads, so many people underestimate the importance of communicating and just generally playing like a team. These are super simple things that literally anybody could do, like calling out slash marking enemy positions, or communicating your own position to your teammates, or coordinating a full team push. Communication like that can be taken for granted, and it's a large reason why so many players struggle in team game modes. The next less obvious thing that makes Tifu such a great player is that he's so good at understanding and manipulating angles and fights. So I'll show you guys a short little clip of what I mean by this, but be warned that it all happens pretty quickly, so really try to pay close attention to the second guy he fights here. Wait, did that dude? Yeah. I hit flushed him. I downed this guy over here. Nice, this guy's flushed. I'm pushing him right now. Got him. Alright, so let me kind of break down what happened there. So after Tifu really weakened that first enemy, he heard that enemy's teammate pushing below him. And as he sits on high ground looking for him, he kind of catches a glimpse of him at the very last second. What the enemy was trying to do in this situation was line up a shotgun shot from low ground. He was banking on Tifu peeking out to try to locate him from high ground, and if he did that, he would have gotten hit with a very high damage combat shotgun shot. But instead, Tifu saw that he was doing this, and baited the enemy into taking the shot from an angle where Tifu had no chance of actually being hit. As soon as he took that shot, Tifu saw the opportunity to peek out from high ground and hit enough SMG shots to make the enemy incredibly weak. So that was the first example in this clip of Tifu playing angles perfectly. The second example is what he did after he made the enemy one shot. What most people would have done there was just sit on high ground and just hope the enemy makes a really big mistake that ends up exposing them. But what Tifu did instead is he jumped off the high ground because he knew it would give him enough of an angle to hit the one shot needed to get the kill. Instead of relying on the enemy to create an angle for him, he instead created one for himself. 
So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you watched the entire thing, be sure to let me know with a comment down in the comment section below. This video was a breakdown of Tifu, who I personally believe is the greatest Fortnite player of all time. So my question for you guys is, who do you think is the Fortnite GOAT? Be sure to leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, turn on post notifications, do whatever the heck you want, and I will catch you guys next time.